It's been over two years since I started making games, and the progress I've made throughout that time is quite revealing. So come with me as I tell my story of becoming a game developer, and the ugly messages, the glaring successes, and the major downfalls as well. As you come with me on this adventure through my history, maybe you can take something away from my mistakes so you can do much better than I. Our journey begins in September of 2020, and despite making Scratch Games since 2017, I never really knew about game engines until I watched Lixian TV's video about making a game in under 24 hours, allowing me to discover Unity. I downloaded it, followed some tutorials, and pooped out the hot garbage that is shapes doing stuff. I made this disaster using Jonas Tyroller's 3D Unity tutorials, which really helped me learn the engine fast and effectively. Then I proceeded to try and do a game jam, but I failed. But then from that, I learned more about Unity and the tools it has. And so from that failure, a new phoenix was born. Well, the phoenix of the floating isle, that is. Also, I just realized this. Uh, the Ackerman Pop V. This thing was fun to make, but how is it fun to play? It's, it's not really. It's honestly more of a toy than a game, to be honest. A bad toy, but kind of one nonetheless. Then I proceeded to make push and blocks in November of that year. The game used the same code from Jonas' t tutorials and was pretty decent. Then I participated in Dynam's completion jam and I ended up making the game in one day and what came out was the little gem that is Cubes Aren't Well Rounded, also known as Car. This jumpless platformer leads you through a basic story about a cube having an identity crisis as you struggle to platform using the odd physics to your advantage. Healthy 5 out of 10. Then the birth of this channel occurred with three devlogs covering the failed project that is did, and then the explosion of my stupid punch a bunch demo review. Following my channel's early spread of growth, I made Steel and Score for the Black Term Fraud Game Jam 3. There was gonna be a devlog for this one, but it actually got corrupted during rendering, which I'm still kind of annoyed about even to this day. In February 2021, I participated in the Brackies Game Jam and made Cave Pin. This was my first experiment with GDevelop. I tried to make this in GDevelop because it seemed way easier to make stuff there, and while that is true, it's actually quite a lot harder to make larger things in GDevelop, which is why I mostly stick to Unity. Despite that, Cajun is still one of my better games, taking you through a mildly climactic story, decent platforming, and some nice visuals. Then, because I was literally insane at the time, I proceeded to make a whole other game a week later for the Wally Jan 3.0, making... Don't Die. What? It? Yeah, this game is quite weird, honestly, and is the first game I made with voice acting. It's also the only game I've made with voice acting. Just saying, got a feeling, I feel like there's a correlation. Then in March, I decided to make a game in five minutes while watching a Dynam stream. I mean, it definitely exists. Despite making whatever that prior thing is, I did make an actual decent game in March. Boots Renewal. Boots Renewal was made for the Helper Wesley's Fireside Jam, and it was quite fun to make, actually. The game, despite being in GDevelop, was not a generic GDevelop platform, which is quite surprising for me. The game was quite simple and quite fun if you ignore the very easy cheese. In April, I made a game. Um... It certainly exists. I don't... I don't know why it exists. Uh... The next actual game was Revolution. This experiment was made for the Xander Gen 3 and was a fun mess around in the world of voxel modeling and building terrain in Unity. The game was quite simple, where you just build up a mob to literally overthrow them. It was also my first game with intentional control support. The prior games included it without me even realizing, but this one, I did. And I don't know what else shows improvement other than... Well, that was improvement. The next game I made was 5218, which was made with the sole purpose of being in a video, as such it only makes sense in the context, but I would prefer you not watch that. In May, I participated in the Jamulator. The goal was simple. Make a simulator game. As such, I made totally accurate car simulator, also known as Pack. This is very accurate to real-life car simulator, as in an endearing physics system simulating all six dimensions of physical freedom, and also pertains to high-end graphics unlike ones ever seen before. Pack is truly the game of all time. In June, the GMTK Game Jam happened, and Color Link also certainly happened. The game has, like, no ideas, merit, conflict, story, game, and graphics. It, it, I don't even know if it really exists. 
I, even when I was replaying this game, for this video, I was just confused. I have to get a level. And what's the point of the two characters? Like, I think this game was, like, connected or something. But, like, so I, I get it to some degree, but, like, what's the, what's the point? My gosh, you can jump. In July, I participated in yet another Xander Jam, the Xander Jam 4. But this time, I also challenged myself to do the Geo Jam as well. The resulting product was squared in. This shape-shifting, generic G-developed platform was pretty decent. The boxes are horrible, though. Like, but you have to give me some slack as somebody, myself, uh, got the COVID, so you, like, you know. Uh, the development was cut short, and I simply uploaded what I already made. Then I learned one of the most important lessons I've learned throughout my game development journey. Pace yourself. I burn out. I was pumping out one to two games every month and suffered greatly. I tried to make something in August and I couldn't put myself to do it. Same with September. The same held true for most of October until I scraped by and made a little Metroidvania called Broccoli Reaper. I had recently played Hollow Knight and wanted to make something in the same vein. As such, this was created. The game is quite small, but still fun and shows what a little determination can do. Then November rolled by, and all I did really was improve Broccoli Reaper. Then December came, and two things happened. For one, I made Cookie Claws. This little game was made an hour and is quite nice looking for something made within that time frame. By far my best looking game made in an hour, and honestly pretty pleased with what it is. But m secondly, and much, much more importantly, I started the development of my dream Metro game. Broccoli Reaper was the experiment. This was my attempt to make something larger. Our first development was fine, but something felt troubling. Development was stopped. Within those two months, I made compare complications for the indie game jam, placing second overall in first creativity. So quite pleased with this one, we even released an expansion to it recently. Then March came, and I picked the Metroidvania back up, making decent but sporadic progress. I started to track my time developing the game at this point and released two more devlogs. Then May eventually came and I made a sending of Vivian's recommended game. The game was supposed to be endless, but it definitely ends. Uh, frame rate starting to drop. This is when we evacuate. Um, then June came and I made more progress in the Metro video. Same with July. The video for July even boosting off to over a thousand views. Development continued, but began to become more sporadic, and more doubts began to swirl. I kept making the game despite not working on it. I avoided the game, but I didn't work on either thing. My output became the more dormant and consistent. My determination and confidence left me, and I was left with a game that I knew I could make. The Metroidvania was never to be. I never will. Knowing this, I decided to step back and make something small, and in doing so, I was reminded of what I love about game development and video creation. In October of 2022, I released Put It All of the Game. It was a silly little game, quite a stupid concept, but it was simply fun to make. I found that sparky. The art was fun to make, the, the game was fun to program, the video was fun to write and record, everything had fallen back into place, and I'd found my spark yet again. The Metroidvania was draining me because I knew the scope was too big. I was putting my work and effort into this. I was lying to myself, telling me it'll be fine. Despite knowing it wouldn't, so when I took that burden away from myself, I was creatively recharged, uplifted. And going forward, I'm going to try and pursue that. And as such, 2023 will yet again be full of projects. I'm not going to go overboard again, like 2021, as the amount of quantity just showed how damaging that could be. But I'm not gonna go as big as 2022, because that too shows damaging it's gonna be. This year I'm gonna focus on quality. Smaller things, mind you. But I wanna work on polish and quality and just making better games. So yes, this is my story. This is my story of how I got into game development. How I made some amazing games, how I made some critical mistakes, and how now I prefer. So thank you for watching. Thank you for a wonderful past few years. Most importantly, there is more to come. See you later. Goodbye.